Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. Other times of day that they have on Krypton or like in the Green Lantern Core or in alternate realities or in the future or in the past or even just whatever timeline Wells wants to follow, I guess. Welcome on Elwoes to you there at home. I'm your host, Red Thunder Adam Gerard, and joining me this week are the Probe Madridsons. Hi. The Honey Badger, Terry O'Neill. Fucking kid's still on my lawn. Get off. <laughs> it's been a week. And the dad knight, Braden Ahern. I hope that timeline Wells is following has ramps. <laughs> uh, he can walk, though. He's pushed his fucking wheelchair <laughs> up it. He'll just move his foot ever so slightly. He'll just slowly fucking drag himself up. Yeah. <laughs> hope nobody's watching. No, just, no, go backwards, just slowly puts his foot down, push up, and then... So anyway, <laughs> how are we this week, gentlemen? Not too Very good. shabby. Good. Yep. Good. Phenomenal, phenomenal movie this week. Oh, great movie. <laughs> it's fantastic. Great mm. movie this week. Much well, like your hair. Well, thank you. Well, I, I you know, I try new styles. I'm a, I'm a man of, of Parisian fashion. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is all the rage in Monaco right now. You <laughs> wait and see New York summer next year for this. And... So the week's been pretty interesting this week. Yes. It's been pretty interesting. Um, I mean, not much has happened, but it's just been interesting. Yeah, you can have a slow week and be interesting. It's fine. It's fine. I went to a wedding yesterday. That was interesting. There was a DJ who looked like Skrillex who played really, really, really inappropriate songs like It Wasn't Me. <laughs> wow. Things you got to see the... Uh, the Shaggy! <laughs> Shaggy! But hey, it wasn't me. So... That aside, but you know, you know what really upset me? What really, really upset me was the what fact grand, what grand that there was not. You know what? You know what song we didn't hear play? What's that? This one. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out. That upset me. I mean, Matt wasn't there, so I, I, I mean, you know. Then make it worse. Didn't even get this one. And I thought, you know, I thought, okay, maybe, 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 maybe they'll, they'll get something for me to dance to. Maybe I'll hear this. No. And finally, of everything, I just thought, well, I'll put in a request. I'll put in a request. And I went to the DJ and said, I want to dance, Mr. DJ. I want to dance. I got the music in me, Mr. DJ. <laughs> and I said, I want you to play a song. And he said, I don't have that song. I've never heard of it. What? And and I could not believe it. So you, you know what? You failed this city. So you, you failed you know this what? wedding. We are we are now going to have a very special from the back cave wedding break dance session right now. You ready? It's a new day. Yes, it is. Anyway, moving on. Should we talk this week on TV? Because it was quite an interesting week, I think. What do you think? Should we do it? You gonna do it? Yeah. Do we? Do we? Atomic batteries to power. Turbines to speed. She's got a head as big as the Metrodome as it is. Oh, well, what do you expect? Garlands thrown at your feet? Well, I'd like a 145-foot triple master schooner with a teak interior, but hey, Lola. <laughs> Time's a fall. What's everybody standing around for? It's a newspaper. Not happy hour at Buckingham Palace. Jimmy, never underestimate the need for a good obituary. Oh, great shades of Elvis. What are we here? The Daily Planet? Alrighty. Mmm. Now, this was an interesting week of TV because it kind of it broke down some norms and some barriers I'm not used to seeing. Damn! And uh, that actually means this week we start off with the weakest episode, in my opinion, Lois and Clark. Mm. Let that sink in. 
Also, let it sink in that like you've got a good 25 minutes to make a cup of tea because Matt's going to fucking try and read the synopsis. Screw you guys. Bunch of hippies. Uh, that would be bearded hippies to you, Matt. Yeah. Tree hugging <laughs> bearded hippies. Hashtag um, beard revolution. <laughs> shut up. Week two. The revolution's taking over. The have I told you? Have I told you how I brought in this beard revolution? This is why how it takes me I so fucking long. That to I brought do a That's because you're boring as shit, and we have to entertain you up. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to polish a turd here. Fuck off! You can actually polish a turd. <sighs> so much I don't think you can. Well, what, okay, well then, what can't you polish? Because if he, he's, if he's mustard. not a turd, mustard, mustard, because manure, like you can actually compress it and get rid of the moisture out, so it becomes a solid object. Then you can actually polish it. Whereas mustard, unless you freeze the motherfucker. And you can't reseed it, is what you're trying to say. Yeah. Okay, fine, I'm trying to polish mustard here. Matt the Mustard Richard. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Honeymoon in Metropolis. Metropolis. Every fucking time. Much to the disbelief of the Daily Planet staffers, Lois decides <laughs> to go to the Lex Luthor's Hotel Honeymoon Suite for a weekend of total relaxation. Completely coincidentally, she is there where she spots a congressman Ian Harrington accepting cash in a building directly across from her suite after showing Perry, Cat, Jimmy and Clark a photographic evidence of this. Perry decides to set Lois and Clark as honeymooners in the suite so that they can set up a spy operation on Ian Harrington's further meetings with the men bringing him. Oh, bribing him, sorry. Lois and Clark discovers the man bribing Harrington, Harrington to be a man named Rourke. And this is the plans, uh, and that his plans are possibly greater than either of them had previously imagined. Using secret sources, Perry w- reveals that uh, Thaddeus Rourke is an international arms dealer in, a charge, in charge of a company called Apoc- Apocalypse Consulting which owns the building they are spying on. The reporters respect. Uh, su- the reporters suspect that perhaps Harrington is selling them secrets. The next night, Lois and Clark play board games to pass the time between the activities, on, uh, between the activities of Rourke and Harrington. At one point, uh, Clark's superheroes are made on the way to the room with fresh towels and he quickly uh, hides the surveillance equipment and passionately kisses Lois, which she looked like she enjoyed a little bit. Lois she loved it. Loves it. Loved it. She was a bit moist after that. <laughs> she was stopping. She was a bit mustard after Stop. that. <laughs> <laughs> so as <laughs> later Rourke is telling Harrington that the full extent of his plan is, and is about to show him via a video presentation, but he closes the shutters so that the light won't creep in. Unfortunately for Clark slash Superman, the shutters are lead lined and he can't use his X-ray vision on him, which I just, just a convenient. What? What? <laughs> Jonathan and Martha call the suite sometime later and mistakenly think that Lois and Clark are actually married. Meanwhile, Clark spots Lois creeping around the Apocalypse Consulting's office. Um, offices they, uh, they they've been spying on. When he sees Rock walking into the room, he quickly goes uh, goes to the office as Superman stealthily uses his heat vision on the sprinklers. Saving Lois from the confrontation with Rourke. Which is, it just seemed like the Flash, didn't it? To you guys? Or you guys are just like bleeding out the ears and you're dead. Alright, fair enough. Um, the planet, the Daily Planet staff is meeting a meet and go over their information discussing a project known as Shockwave. Rourke and Harrington have been discussing, as well as Rourke's repeating mention of a boat. They go to Perry's secret source, Sore Throat. And discovers that Shockwave is, coast, uh, is a coastal defense system created by Luther Technologies, and they suspect Rourke is trying to sabotage it to develop his own version. Lois and Clark return to their suite only to discover that their roof has been trashed because Lois left her stupid credit card and blew their cover. And Clark manages to secretly contain a bomb and it explodes quietly in the room under his asshole. Jeez, that was that was a bit of a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Later, when Lois has gone missing and Clark has exhausted all these t- <laughs> as to how to find her, he contacts Lex, L- Lex Luthor asking for Im- information on Shockwave. Luthor arrives 
at the Daily Planet and discusses Shockwave with everyone present, and they deduce that Rourke may be using the system to create a tidal wave so that the Navy will abandon the system. Clark finds Lois and Harrington tied up to the docks just as <laughs> the tidal wave is about to level the docks. Superman creates an underwater trench that neutralizes the wave. Later, Lois spends another night in the suite at the expense of the hotel as an apology for anything that might have happened made their stay any less comfortable and she calls Clark after a strange silence they both wish each other a very good night oh, oh, oh. Superman hang on hang on I've got the perfect thing for this what's that perfect thing for this because frankly fuck this shit I'm out yep mm -hmm. fuck this shit I'm out no thanks don't mind me I'ma just grab my stuff and leave Excuse me, please. Yep, yep. This episode was fucking trash. There were there was one one saving grace in this episode. Was it Terry Hatcher naked in the bathtub full of bubbles? No, it was Park Kent. Okay, for me there was two saving graces. It's Park Kent. Actually, Mar Park and Park Kent. Kent. That were both pretty funny. Yeah, Mar and Park Kent. Mark, I see. Yeah. See, I got a soft spot for Pa, but I agree. Mars pretty good too. Mars, yeah. Mars decent in this. She's, Mars, she's Mars pretty good. They, they do. She's not the mum we need, need, but she's the one we She's the one we deserve for that question. That was fucking. That's it. Atrocious. Not nothing really to say. I think it was meant to develop their relationship further. I think. Yeah. I, well, this this whole point of this show was to lead towards the comic book and on screen wedding of Lois and Clark. Mm. So what they are pushing towards in this season is like obviously I'm thinking by the end of the season they're probably a couple. Mm. Yeah. And you see, that's what it's building towards. Sorry, I'm a bit knackered. I tried to kill myself during that, and I did a little bit of a too good a job. <laughs> Braden, what do you think of Lois and Clark? Yeah, it was pretty... I don't see why they needed to dedicate a whole episode to just moving their relationship forward. Did anybody else pick up on the fact this was just Superman 2? Yep. After it was yeah. pointed out to me by... Me. <laughs> no, okay. seriously, I didn't even I've think because... Right. No, no, it's because the original Superman 2... Has been whitewashed. The original for, Superman too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The non-Richard Donner cut has been whitewashed from. Well, technically, my, they're my doing brain. it both. It's, it's just worse. In, it's worth in Lester's Dick Lester. I, well. I didn't even think of that until this, and just like. Thank you so much for ruining the season for me. Oh, I didn't ruin the season. Like I mean, this you can't ruin something that was already shit. Can't polish mustard. Can't polish mustard. And this. What about tartar so sauce? You reckon you can polish that? No. Oh, it depends if you got a fucking bag of onion rings. And what some... about a hard, uh, like a, a very firm dip? Because technically... Hummus? Got... Beetroot? Yeah, beetroot dip, like, because you well, can It's got squeeze... a sheen to it, though. Yeah, yeah. The milk gives it a sheen. Yeah, if beetroot, you were, like, to wring out the, dips, like, like, most of the, the um, moisture out of it and form a hard compound, you could then shine it up to a certain luxe degree. Shine yeah. up real nice, but, yeah. But, yeah. Turn that bitch sideways and shove it straight up the writer's ass on this one. <laughs> Candy ass, no less. Yeah. Yeah. It's this, just... this is fucking horrible. I just knew where I was going with I, I, I like the whole uh, Flash yeah. episode in this. Yeah, it was an interesting Flash episode. Uh -huh. Yep. <laughs> and and how he, he, he fucking heat rays the uh, the sprinklers, but mm -hmm. when they leave, he hides back into the shadows. That mm -hmm. was that was a classic. Yeah. Mm. I, uh, I don't know I why I bothered getting into his suit for that either. I, I laughed really hard at the fact that like it looked like like when he blew the bomb I sat on the bomb and exploded on his ass there was still smoke coming off his ass afterwards which just made it look like he'd done like the world's <laughs> worst fart yeah I just which like, I imagine when Superman farts there probably is okay. a fucking vapor that comes with it it's small mushroom clouds <laughs> that's okay. probably what it was yeah look, like cockroaches he just sunk die. a fart in there <laughs> okay so going back to bombs and Superman we <laughs> started by the big bang in the couch. <laughs> going back to, to Bombs and Superman in this TV series, if we go back to the one where he ate the bomb mm -hmm. from the, the spaceship, fair enough, right? Because mm -hmm. he's contained it within himself. Mm -hmm. This, he's just sitting on it. The bomb is actually nested but inside the, chair, the house. The chair, no, the chair still... Like, the chair but, still but got I'm, destroyed. I'm sorry, but if that, if that no, bomb... No, the chair didn't get destroyed. There was a hole it, in it. That's there was, yeah, there was a fucking garbage bag hole okay, in it. Here's, okay, okay, what I'm getting at... Should have gone through the floor. I know what you're about to ask. Okay. Yep. I'll, answer, I'll answer all the questions. First of all, the reason his clothes don't get destroyed is that anything that comes in contact with Superman's skin, his clothes aren't going to get destroyed. The reason there's only a hole in the couch is because, yeah, it's a bomb, but it wasn't like it was a fucking gigantic locker thing. It was a little, it's a little piece of C4. It was a dynamite C4 bomb. Now, Just a little I'm, I'm going to go a little bit graphic here for you. You, he can, like your butt cheeks spread goatsies. Mm -hmm. Goatsies <laughs> puts the bomb 
puts the bomb so that he's created a flat surface, right? So the bomb just goes poof and he's absorbed so that the, the, the fallout is contained within his butt crack, but it's still gonna have the like the ring where his butt crack is, it's still gonna melt the fucking couch, but it's not gonna explode outwards because it's contained within his anus. And then the gases travel up through his anus and get that's what was smoking oh, out yeah that's yeah it was holding within the anus and later he will fart and it will smell like C4 and everyone's like and, wow you and smell the, C4 the argument that, that like if you can survive a C4 explosion by getting into a bathtub with another man on top of you you can contain it with your butt that was a lethal weapon if uh, we're going to bring in the film that we all know holds the absolute most truth for um, continuity and for how things work in life and that is the lethal weapon film series yeah and that is that if a bathtub can give a bathtub and a, a black man on top of you with a flak jacket can help you survive that sort of a thing, then absolutely sick man can buff okay. a mushroom cloud up his butt. Fair point. I, really, I mean, his farts gonna, have to be I'm on par gonna, with that. I'm just going to go one step under this because, yes, I totally agree with you. Go, go ahead. No, I can't no, no. I'm just go. Okay, so... The, the bathtub incident, right? That's cool. I, I'm totally down with that because the bomb explodes in a, in a you know spherical way. That's how explosions happen mm-hmm. generally. Mm-hmm. Um, the car sign, like the, the, the top of the bath, so they're below the lip of the bath, so the explosion is not going to wrap around like that. Mm-hmm. It's going to hit that and deflect up. Mm-hmm. And, you know, any debris Plus is going to be... Car sign tub, yes. It was car sign tub and he's had a flak jacket on. So, yeah, cool. I can dig that. <coughs> but the the fact that the bomb was below his butthole and that and that mm-hmm. the explosion is going to go outwards the chair would have disintegrated and he would have been fine you know who you sound like right now Matt yeah. Beryl you sound like Beryl who the fuck's Beryl this is a reference to a previous show that we did this, this is a reference to a previous show that we did How long uh, was that would this? have been the Superman Returns show I'm surprised Adam hasn't clicked onto this yet Beryl Beryl uh, on the train, I believe, maybe oh, you might Beryl. have been listening to yes. her tell a story. Yes. Ah, uh, Beryl. Yeah, yes. it's not believable. Beryl. Yeah, sorry, yes. I'm with yes, you now. Beryl. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Yes. Now, he, he, okay, my kind of argument to that is we've all seen Mythbusters. Yep. And we've all seen the fucking explosive yeah, 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 contaminant yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, perspex yeah, 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 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. that shit, right? Now, there's normally, it's a, a box without a, a top. And mm-hmm. then it gets inverted. Yep. It gets reverse flashed on top of the bomb, and the bomb goes, but it, it doesn't blow the asphalt apart, does it? No. It just leaves a scorch mark on the asphalt. Yep. Okay. Now, the chair that Superman sits in is a pillow top, foam top couch. The bomb is underneath. The bomb is underneath the cushion, not underneath the couch. So they've lifted the cushion. The bomb is underneath the cushion. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Yep. So he sits no, on it, and that's what I'm saying. That's where the yeah. the envelopment is actually that it can hit the ground, but technically, because the force, like he grab it, like it's not gonna, you know, it, it goes that way. If it goes downwards a little bit, he's still got the ability. To, all he has to do is pull in, yeah. and he can suck the fire up. That's pretty sure why I think the smoke was coming out. He was just slowly exhaling it. Right. So, so that's, that's my if, yeah, argument to that. There's room for energy from the explosion to be dissipated. So I will counter anything you say with Superman. Because Superman. Because Riddler. Because Riddler <laughs> and because Superman. Because... Superman. Because Milan hair. Anybody else think... Yeah, oh, anybody got anything else they'd like to say about this episode? Not really, no. That's... Uh, all right, no. let's let, let's award it up. I'll give it... All right, I'm going to give my Krancis to the parent, parents of Kent. He <laughs> old the parents of Kent. The house of Kent. Okay. The, the house of Kent. Kent. The, Kent the house man. of Kent. No, the, the house of Kent. Uh, Barbois. Barbois goes to the tsunami. I'm sure Japan has agreed with you on many times with that. So he can go bitch itself. He's got bitched out by a little man creating a worm, a worm tunnel but, but, like through it and then it gets magically sucked yeah, out. Yeah, I don't understand uh, the physics, but I'm sure because Superman. Would you like me to give you a 15 minute lecture on Because the... Superman, I'm good. You're much smarter than Matt. I know. <laughs> and yet he has the degree. I don't. Does he have a doctorate in thugonomics? No, I have that. Me too. I went to school with someone who did that. Do they? Do you know automatically that life equals word and word equals life? Yep. Matt doesn't understand what basic thugonomics is. I mean, come on, it's He's an basic. absolute fucking poser, mate. He's an it's absolute just... poser. He's just like, I don't even know what a word life is. I don't even know what life is. The only word I know was from Lethal Weapon told me what word was. Four letter word with the with, with the four, or in the middle. Don't no, yeah, the beginning. It starts at the W, end. ends at word. Raj, 
Wet rigs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But seriously, has anybody got anything to say about this? Has anybody no. got anything to say about this Brain? episode at all? Got nothing. I, I don't even have a Barbara or a Cranston for this. Shit. Wow. I'll give just... a give a rating. Zero gloves. Zero gloves. Shit. Wow. I'm gonna take a moment here, Matt, because you just you just became an OG. So. Uh... Word life. This is basic thugonomics. This is ba- basic thugonomics. Word life. I'm untouchable, but I'm forcing you to feel it. Word life. Serious? That's, that's, the original that's... John Cena theme, baby. That was back when John Cena was I good. Hate, I hate him even more. No, now. no, no, he was no, good. That's good, Cena. Yeah, that that was was good. Don't you rag on the Dr. Oh, Thugonomics of my son. Say. You're the poster child for the birth control pill. You go down quicker than a hoe for a $5 bill. <laughs> you come in here with a shitty beard and you start ragging on the Dr. Thugonomics. Fucking last episode, you had a fucking dig at me about the beard, alright? When I was fucking agreeing with you on how good yours is. Yeah, well, this time you're, you're not agreeing on how great word life is. So I'm going to come back to it and I'm going to say this. You know what's really funny? In this week, or the last two weeks, Chad Kroger lost his beard at Avril Lavigne and you can't grow one. So further proof that you're fucking Chad Kroger, mate. <laughs> Did you name your beard Avril Lavigne? Is that its nickname? I'm fucking over it. Like, I fucking get it. I don't grow a beard. I Fine. can't grow a Would beard. Would you like me to make fun of you in a different way? No, just fucking get on with this stupid fucking episode of fucking Lois and Clark, you fucking sack of shit. Oh, come on, Matt. No. You're a national treasure. You're a national treasure. <laughs> now, Brayden, <laughs> what did you think of this episode? Uh, yeah, I've got nothing else to say with it. I'm happy to go Barbara's and Cranston's. Yep. Um, I don't think I have a Barbara, but I've got a Barry Allen Better Job Award <laughs> for uh, Lois. For Ooh. dropping her credit card, why the fuck does she even need her bag is beyond me. Yeah, Lois is pretty dumb. So um, Cranston's, I'm probably going to have to late on. jump on to Myron Park Kent with also an honourable mention to Superman's butt for just containing <laughs> bomb. Superman's anus gets Cranston. And, and what? How many gloves are you giving it? How many gloves? Two. Well, he, here's my answer. I'm going to give you the, the Cranston first. I'm going to do this in a little bit of reverse order. It'll make sense in a minute. The Cranston goes obviously to Myron Park Kent. They are base god on this show. Mm-hmm. The Barbara for this episode goes to Matt for being a fucking idiot and doubting that Superman can control an explosion with his ass. <laughs> Matt, you don't know what word life is. That's what I'm trying to say. Hashtag no word life. Hashtag, hashtag word life it ain't Matt. And, uh, and finally, how many gloves am I going to give this? See, initially I was going to give it two gloves. One for my and one for Pa. Yeah, but it really this, this episode really upset Matt. So four gloves. <laughs> that's fair but Matt I love you that's all that matters so seriously yep welcome back your dreams were your ticket out let's talk the flush Please. the flush the flush well there was a theme to this flush when I saw the title, I got excited. Well, so, hey, there was a theme to what you say. Was it? Was it a theme? Was it this theme? And his name is John C. <laughs> you know, I saw the title and I got excited. I thought we were going to get the clock king because it's called Beat the Clock. But it wasn't. So, Matt, I think we need to start a new hashtag. Hashtag Bring Back the Sax. Hit mm. my music, Funky White Boy. I've got something right for you, bro. Opening it with a man in jail playing the sax, the man is revealed as Wayne Cart- uh, Cottrell, who is less than an hour away from being put to death for the murder of his partner Linda, who is a successful jazz singer. Julio has been using work resources to uncover who really killed Linda as Wayne Cart- Cottrell is one of Julio's old friends. A call is placed to the crime lab which Barry answers. It's one of Julio's other jazz friends, because, you know, apparently black people and jazz just go together. Is on the end of the end. They show stereotypes like a motherfucker. A little bit. Oh, that's fine. That's right. That's fine. The fade out's good. It works. Is on the other end and reveals that he has gotten hold of a tape that proves Wayne's innocence. Shortly after saying this, he is dragged from the payphone by an unknown assailant who kills him. Barry is a flash, race, has raced over to the scene, but it's too late. Somehow our killer has left the tape behind. What but a retard. But in an uncanny luck, uh, chance of luck, has been run over by a truck. I think it's a for- forensic countermeasure. He knew the truck was coming. Barry grabs Tina and takes her... Damn crafty villains. Damn them. <laughs> Knowing the bus schedule. 
<laughs> Barry grabs Tina and takes her, takes her and the tape to Star Labs, where Tina tries to reconstruct the tape with the digitalizer. Barry goes to Iron Heights. To Science Yo. Science Yo. Marie felt busy wasn't there. Yeah, I got, I got one. Clearly. You got a digitalizer. Yeah, I got a digitalizer. Excellent. Oh, we might use it later on. I use it for digitalizing. Yeah. Excellent. Barry it goes hunts. to Iron Heights. <laughs> it hunts. <laughs> Barry goes to Iron Heights to meet with Cottrell. He questions Cottrell and gets the full story for him and finds out that he left with another girl named Susie Storm because, you know, he plays like that because he's a saxophone player. He plays what? <laughs> Eh. Back at Star Labs, Tender's managed to reconstruct the tape within like 10 minutes, even though they said before a bit like hours. Where it is, it sounds as if Linda has done a fresh recording. Julio arrives at the lab, telling he just saw his friend's body at the morgue, the guy who got killed in the payphone. On the tape, we hear Elliot Cottrell, who is Wayne's brother, the bar owner, speaking to Linda. They quickly deduce that Susie's body was identified in Linda's and that Linda is still alive and being used by her by Wayne's brother to produce more music so he likes money because, you know, apparently black people are thieves like that, yo. We discovered that Linda was beaten so badly by Elliot that she had lost a large chunk of her short-term memory. Julio is eavesdropping and, he eavesdropping and hears all of this conversation between Elliot, Elliot and his goon, known as Whisper. The Flash gets tossed out of the window as he tries to convince Linda that she needs to come with him and that he's a friend. Meanwhile, Julio has gotten into a brawl with Whisper and Linda has has stumbled into the Take 5 club and performed in front of a large clown, thus revealing that she is very much alive. Baron and Julio whisk Linda off to the prison just mo uh, moments before Wayne is executed, thus proving Wayne never killed her. Elliot reveals him himself to be behind the whole thing. And that was Pride and Prejudice. Now, uh, <laughs> here's, here's something I took away from this, is that uh, there wasn't enough sacks in this, so Matt and I took it upon ourselves to both find what we feel... Good. Could have been better sax, because the sax really wasn't used in the right way. It wasn't great. No, it was no. a great sax. So, uh, look, this is what I found. Preach. Matt, what did you find? to look long and lean into the camera now when we get this. Briggs! Briggs! Get to all for the shit. Get to all for the shit, Briggs! Get to all for the shit. Oh, this was pretty weak. Um, now... Better than Lost Clark, oddly enough. Now, uh... As, as those of you at home will know, those of you who are my fans with such face that you all are, I'm the best, um, will know that I'm always right. So it's, it's basically my thing, is to always be right. Um, and um, I normally don't in, give a damn. In the same way that John Cena never gives up, mm. I'm always right, and you don't give a damn, mm. and Matt's usually wrong. And Brayden just sits there being handsome. And Matt, like, Matt, Ooh. yeah, and Bra Brayden is just, Brayden's going to Brayden. You know yeah. I mean? Brayden's going to Bray, Bray, Bray. With a face like that, I mean, you don't need Whose skill. face is it? It's this is my face. Now, but impeccable timing. As but well, as we were saying, Captain Fail uh, came in here earlier and and asked me a question about this about this episode, and I was very happy. <laughs> well, was it me? Is this in I, regards I, I to the, was this in regards to the man having a sax on yeah, death row? Right. It could have been me. I apologize. Me. I apologize, Matt. I'm so Sorry, used to who stupid was it? Questions coming Fuck. from you. What? Wait, so, who was it? It wasn't you. It wasn't me. It wasn't it, me. So I apologise, Matt. Was in the shower. I, 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 I take my it. brain automatically goes fuck up, Matt. But in this time, you're not a fuck up. So it wasn't in the shower. You go, it wasn't hang, me. Hang, I need I need a clear piece of audio I'm so that you can make this his ringtone. Matt, you're not a fuck up this week. Terry, you asked me a stupid fucking question. Eat no, badger, I... eat. Um, no, actually, my general question was: Is it normal? Would it be normal for someone to have a sax on death row? It wasn't. Was it in malice? Or was no, it in it malice? It was. Well, coming for you, it was a good... Now, the answer that I gave you was this. Well, technically, this this takes place three hours before he's supposed to die, or an hour mm -hmm. before he's... You know, it's just mere, mere hours from his death. I'm willing to bet being death row that mm -hmm. you get a last request. Mm -hmm. And his last request, I mean, uh, you know, in, in the same way that I imagine, let's say, Slash gets mm -hmm. sent to death row, his mm -hmm. last request would probably be, I want to play my guitar. 
I haven't been able to play my guitar and the whole time I just want to play my guitar one last time. Mm -hmm. yep. okay. That's what I felt it was, was that was that uh, our man on death row was just like, I just want to play my sax. That's fair. That's I got fair. some lethal weapon to write. It was the 90s. Or the 30s. It was, yeah. Or the 80s. Or the Either way, I just don't fucking know with this show anymore. Well, it was the year. I really don't. It was the year of prohibition and high top sneakers, <laughs> and CD underground bars called Take Five and Zoot Suits. Apparently, mm. yeah, this episode was pretty mediocre, better than Lois and Clark, but that was just because Lois and Clark stunk. Yeah, I, mean, I like I like that Julio is getting a little bit more. I like how Barry just keeps wanting to tell him that he's the Flash, and Julio is too stupid to have let Barry finish the sentence. Yep. <laughs> like a Julio man. I can do on. this. No, 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 no. I'm the flag. Get a car, Barry. <sighs> oh, get to a phone. That's what it was. Get to a phone. So fuck off. Barry, you don't have time for this. Just get me a car. No, Julio. You need to listen. And uh, as we discussed last week, I think if anybody was going to be good at stealing a car, <laughs> it would be Julio. This was rife with stereotypes. I, uh, not racist. That was the 90s writing. No, that wasn't me. How many Sony people have you pissed me? off? Do you listen to this show? Know your product, everybody. I uh, apparently I try to say things that are meant to be deep and like thoughtful, and they just come out as me insulting black people by accident. Even though black people are my favorite people. <laughs> but no, this this episode was rife with stereotypes, and it got really boring really fast. It's just it got boring from the moment it started. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Braden, you got much to say? Nah. Well said. All right, let's give it some gloves. <sighs> and Cranston's if you got them. I do have Cranston's. My Cranston is uh, someone who I've never given a Cranston to. I never thought I would. Matt? <laughs> you fucking idiot. Um, <laughs> no, I'm actually going to give it to Julio. He actually sort of stepped up and played the best friend, the never, the, the, John's, the black John Cena of this show. He do you, know what, do you know what else I bet he played? What's that? The bass. True. Racist, but true. To so the 90s. <laughs> or the 30s. And I, I, the we also had that... Oh. Okay, I'm going to break. I'm going to break <laughs> kayfabe a little bit. We had a conversation off here about the saxophone, and obviously it turned into, as, as our conversations <laughs> do, things we shouldn't say. Um, and one of the things we discussed was that the reason he had a saxophone was because you can't really use a saxophone as a weapon, but a bass guitar is pretty fucking deadly, so you can't just <laughs> you give him use, a bass guitar. Or you can use the strings as a choke wire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but... Right. Yeah. but yeah, he's allowed his sax because it's a much less... That, I don't know, despite the fact it's a lethal like, weapon, it's a much less lethal weapon than a bass guitar. <laughs> I don't know. If you, if you, have you ever picked up a sax? Have I picked up a sax. You, you've been hit with a fucking bass guitar, mate. I know which one I'm choosing. I don't know. Fucking... Saxes crumple. Uh, yeah, it's, Saxes it's... crumple when you get hit with them. Yeah, you, you guard up and it just crumbles on your shoulder. But It has a flex like point. A bass is a solid fucking piece of and wood, And it depends mate. which type of bass you're talking about. If you're talking about like the big double bass, you're fucked. Yeah. Mate, if you can swing a big double bass, that's it. You've got to be shaking that job with some shit. Swing. Get, hit, get hit with the uh, baritone sax and tell me how. Oh, how no, good I've that been hit with lots of sax. In I'm, fact, I've got, got a bass guitar hanging up back here. You want me to hit you with it? Sure. Alright. I'm going to get a tenor sax and I'm going to hit you over the head with it. <laughs> Mike, look, straight in the throat, mate. Yeah, you can do that with the sax. With the sax, you're just going to be like, yeah, but. Let's be real. Who's going to attack somebody with a sax? So you got if you get attacked with a sax, here's how you counter that. Can you play lethal weapon? <laughs> in fact, let's throw this over, Brayden. Uh, can I go over the social media lounge and ask you in the social media lounge, what would you rather get hit with, a saxophone or a bass guitar? I think I'd rather get hit with a saxophone because I, I, I think a guitar would do more damage. Yeah. So that that's three to or four to one because I count for two people. Four to zero because Matt doesn't count as anything. So four to zero. <laughs> but if, but if but if you at home would like to tell us if you'd rather get hit by a saxophone or a bass guitar... Hashtag saxophone or bass. <laughs> Sax hashtag bass. saxophone or bass. Hashtag that on Facebook at facebook.com slash from the Batcave or twitter.com slash from Batcave. Send us an email at from the Batcave.podcast at gmail.com. For you guys, would saxophone versus bass be a better film than Superman versus Batman? <laughs> no. 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 If it didn't have Ben no. Affleck in it. Yes. Because they would probably cast someone like... George Jared Leto. Playing both characters. 
Jake Gyllenhaal. As, as Romilla. Ashton Kutcher. And this, so let's let's just rate this fucking thing. Uh, two gloves. Who goes getting my Cranston? Yep. And whispers my bitch. Uh, Barbara. Cool. Done. Braden. Yeah, I'm gonna lay jump on a Julio. I like him in this episode. Yep. Cranston. Uh, give it a two and a half. And Barbara to was it the sore throat dude? What was his name? Sore throat. Oh, yeah, whisper. sore throat. No, whisper. Sore throat. Sore throat, throat was... was his code name. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was because it was a play on deep throat, yeah. the Woodward and Bernstein thing. That was I the we were joke. About in it. Flash, not Lawson Clark. Oh, of course. My apologies. My apologies. Yeah, you might drop me. Yes, it was whisper. It was this whisper. One. It was whisper in this one. Oh, was we it? Just had, we had two whisper. weeks where they had the same basic plot point. <laughs> Dude with a bad right. throat and a black, evil black dude. Dude with the, the, the cut from ear to ear was yeah. whisper. Yeah. I have a feeling that might be a psychological thing because he may have been choked when he was younger, so that's why he used And I'm going to I'm gonna also counter that, Brayden, with, like, I remember nothing from this episode, and I watched it yep. yesterday. So, right, I'm with you on, I thought the same thing because this ep- I, I literally remember nothing from this episode. Yeah. Matt, go ahead, what you got? Um, my barber goes to the Death Row, uh, Death Row's brother. Mm-hmm. Elliot. Elliot for being an absolute douchebag for doing that to his brother. Oh, cop. now I remember who Whisper was. Yeah. I Whisper was the dude voice. that Elliot was using to kill people. Yeah, Whisper was the guy who voice have just made dust. me want to fucking give up. That's why I blocked this episode out because his voice made me so mad. Because he had throat I'm cancer. I'm going to tell you what the quick and the dead is. I, I, I like how they, they explained that he had his throat cut from ear to ear and severed his vocal cords, yet every now and then he let, like, a normal voice, a out. Normal voice out, especially when he laughed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That was stupid. Don't make me laugh. How many gloves you giving it? None. None? Wow, Man. that's two weeks in a row. Matt's, yeah. Matt's angry. Matt's angrier than I am. Cranston goes to the sax player. Wayne? Yeah. Wayne Cottrell? It wasn't right. Lethal Weapon sax, but it was... But he didn't no, give in. Sax. It did, he didn't, he give, didn't in. give in. He didn't give up. Here's my answers to this question. <sighs> Who gets the barber? This was hard, but it's Whisper. Because fuck me, that... Now that now that you have put it back into my head, I can't unforget it, and it's making me really sad because forgetting was one of the favorite parts of my life this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, Whisper was actually worse than a neck tattoo. Um, the neck Cranston related. just goes to the saxophone. The sa- not the <laughs> saxophone player, just the saxophone in general. Such a great sure. instrument. Mm-hmm. Really Excellent. helped. I mean, it pushed Lethal Weapon into that the bounds of just greatness. Excellent. That is not true. not the saxophone alone. That is true. And uh, my glove rating. I was going to go with Matt Zero, but then I remembered, of course, it has a saxophone in it, so three gloves. Excellent. Fantastic. I'm glad we can all agree on that. Getting, uh, the Gimp's head. And you killed the Gimp! That's oh, how Gimp's down. I am. You killed the Gimp. <laughs> Man down, I got... He's dead. He's dead. How do you learn to fall from a three-foot ladder? <laughs> how the hell you learn to get hit with a pack of Ajax wipes? <laughs> you don't have a damn clue where he is. Man, the Gimp is fucking knackered now. Yeah. No, he's gone. He's gone. He's gone. You're not gonna get that. Nah, the gimp's the gimp's gone, mate. Just just put him out. He, he killed the gimp. It's all good. So, um, let's talk Batman because Batman was fucking amazing this week. All right. Ah, uh, Batman. The Penguin goes straight. Attending a matinee performance at a Gotham City theater, the Penguin foils a thief's attempt to steal a ruby from the beautiful actress Sophia Star. Yeah, but don't forget it, it was while everybody was going out for a refreshing orange drink. Very vitally important to the story because they mentioned it in both episodes, Brady. <laughs> then at the Millionaire's Club, he stops two crooks from kidnapping millionaire Reggie Rich from a steam room. When Batman and Robin arrive, the felonous foul announces his Penguin Protection Agency, which will protect the wealth of Gotham City society crowd. The dynamic duo are immediately suspicious, believing this to be a plot to steal Sophia Star's jewels which Penguin has been hired to protect. They send Alfred Pennyworth in the guise of an insurance company agent to photograph the jewellery and switch Penguin's cigarette holder for one with a hidden microphone. However, a bug detector located in the handle of Penguin's umbrella spoils Alfred's route, and he only just manages to escape with the photos. After using the pictures to create fake jewels, the Cape Crusader and the Boy Wonder break into Sophia's apartment in order to swap them with real jewels, but they are caught red-handed by the Penguin and his agents of... But Batman and Robin charge with burglary. Uh, they later on... That's the end of my synopsis, but they're later on captured by the Penguin 
and hung up behind a, a shooting gallery at a fair where the Penguin talks Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara to shoot a couple of balloons which Batman and Robin are behind, uh, which they didn't know about. And, uh, and the, guns, uh, the guns are, in fact, loaded. With real Batman and Robin are swinging pair of dead ducks. What on earth can save them? Don't shoot, Commissioner. Don't shoot. Good grief. Good night. Double funeral tomorrow. Same bat time. Same bat channel. Can you see a way out? Yep. Not yet. <laughs> yeah. If they have a yep. doctorate in thugonomics, it'd be fine. <laughs> Batman has a doctorate in everything. <laughs> Batman invented word life. <laughs> Batman is word life. Uh, next episode, not yet he ain't. Batman and Robin avoid Commissioner Gordon and Chief O'Hara's bullets by deflecting them with the bulletproof soles of their boots. Batman cuts himself and his chum free using his bat knife, and they make their escape. Furious that the dynamic duo have escaped from his trap, the Penguin persuades his new society friends to make Commissioner Gordon rally a manhunt. The dynamic duo arrive at the Penguin Protection Agency, pretending to be insane and about to tear the Penguin and his henchmen, Eagle Eye and Dove, to pieces. A fight breaks out, but then the police arrive to pursue the two crime fighters out of the building and into the street. So the chase ends into a shootout in a nearby alley in which Batman and his trusty chum are apparently killed. The Penguin is unaware that this is merely a ruse and Batman has arranged for the policeman's guns to be loaded with blanks. The fiendish foul and his finks steal the Batmobile and then speed off to plan their master plan involving Penguin's marriage to Sophia Starr and the theft of his own wedding gifts. Uh, he is later caught by Batman. Oh. Yeah. Batman's has all charged it against him drop. He's Batman. Yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff to talk about in this episode. A lot of shit came out of this episode. I was worried that, that for a minute there, Terry had run off to Mexico to avoid manslaughter charges, but he's back, and that's good. No, it's all right. It's all good. to say, I, even though this was the best TV of the week, it was a rough week. Oh, yeah, I, it was pretty bad. It's pretty bad. It's pretty bad. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> uh, pretty, uh, first things average. first, uh, I want to talk about something I noticed. Yep. Yeah. And that would be Penguin's hair. Because Penguin, <laughs> Penguin fucking, what we talk about how things are retro. This is fucking retro, mate. Mm-hmm. Penguin invented Brayden's rape hair back in 66. You ready? <laughs> you ready? Have a look at this shit. Have a look at that. Yeah. Look at the hair on the Braden statue next to that. That's the same fucking haircut. <laughs> Look at it! Yep. Yep. It's disgusting. I'm taking it's it off bit... the screen just in case somebody catches some sort of pedophilia from it. But mm, we'll have the cost. You can't actually. That's, that's ironic. It's, it's a disease. Um, I wish people realised that. But anyway. Mm. No, I'm not, not defending pedophiles. It's just, it's a disease. It's a disease. It's a brain disease. Ones who act on it are fucking terrible human beings. But there are ones out there who know what's accept what's wrong with them, wish they couldn't be that way. Know that if you actually have have that problem and you control yourself, you are a good human being. You really are a good human being. Pedophilia aside, and Braden's rape hair aside, <laughs> there were some other things in this episode that were fucking dumb, but there were some things that were pretty nice. Yep. Now, before we go on to some dumb things, I'm going to let Terry throw out a nice one. Now, Terry, you I was so took note of the Bat Cycle. The week. Bat Cycle turns me on. Let's have a look at the Bat Cycle, shall we? There it is. I'll tell you why. Because that's a... What, what did we find out? It was a 1964? Yes. Harley Davidson Sportster. And it was only used for this one episode. This one episode. Right. And we'll get into the next one. I think the, the next one turns up uh, in uh, yeah. an episode's, episode or two's time. Yeah. So we'll get to talk about so the new one this, soon. But... This turns me on because in the 60s, modifying motorcycle wasn't a big thing and modifying it to the point for like a comic book show wasn't a big thing. And this is just, it is actually quite nice. The way they've designed the windshield, how it's sort of like meant to have the bat wing sort of flare along it. Same with the bat, words, bat wards tubsicle. Um, it's just, it's... Because it's aesthetically pleasing for the 60s. I mean, I know we had... Uh, what was the what, uh, name of the movie again? We had uh, the Captain America bike. We had... Uh, oh, who was it? It was Jack Nicholson and some other bo- bloke and two bikes. Easy Rider? Easy Rider, that's the one. I had the Captain America bike and the other bike. Now, those three, these three bikes are the only bikes I've ever seen in that time period that actually got modified for a TV show or a movie. Mm-hmm. And this thing looks sensational. For a 60s effort, it looks beautiful. Yeah. I, I like the bike. Well, it's now... 
now we need to get into the silly and the bad. Oh, good lord. Matt, what did you have to talk about this week? Um, it's an extension from last episode and a couple of episodes before that, I think, with, um... Oh, mercy. Somebody been bad at their job? Is that what Someone you're being against? fucking horrible okay. at their job. Even though this is supposed to be, like... This Fast. character this character is supposed to be the classiest of all class that ever classed. Penguin? Second... Tim Gordon? Close. Okay. Close. Hang on. Oh, hang on. Are we talking about the tallest human being on the planet? For this series, yes. I'm pretty sure he's the tallest human being on the planet. Yeah. Mm. Ever. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Because Batman, I imagine, is eight foot tall. Yeah. Which means that the band you're talking about must be 12 feet. Yeah. So it's, it's, um, it is our man Alfred. And his inability to just discreetly... Display before, the, just just before you go with this, are you talking about the fact that Alfred is a British trained actor and therefore enunciates Charles? He cannot help the fact that he must enunciate Charles. I don't mind if he enunciates. That's fine. Wow, that was that was would. quite impressive, Matthew. Thank you for oh, fuck a duck, Charles. Matchy. Oh, <laughs> Matchy or <old> chump. <laughs> Look, I, 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 I've got an itchy nose tonight. I'm sorry, I keep doing that, but my nose is. Kill me. Lay off the cocaine. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's stop bleeding. It's gonna bleed. Oh, don't. Yeah. Don't um, bleed. <laughs> don't wish that on the boy. But yeah. Can't this douchebag just go? Hey, Batman. Your phone's ringing, eh? What no. I actually, I, I. Excuse me, sir. The phone is ringing. Excuse me, sir. What sorry, I did like, you, I. Your background. <laughs> The Kevin Owens phone is ringing, sir. You, you mean um, you didn't like him covering up with Mr. K. Ryan? K. Ryan was fantastic. It sounds like crime. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. If, if, like, die. Baggett features, you know, <laughs> Aunt Harriet can... If she <laughs> can crack the code, there's something cra- wrong with it. Exactly. So, so Matt, do you, have, do you a, have an option? I've got a visual aid. Do you, do you have something instead of what of what Alfred should be doing, or is this how you feel, Alfred? This is the next step for Alfred, or what? this is the next step for Alfred? Okay, so what's Alfred yeah. doing next? I've got a visual aid. Okay, so hand, hand. So, so just coming, coming, coming into my window. So we're yep. we're in the. So the phone is here. Here's the yep. bat phone. Yep. So the bat phone. Yep. He picks up the phone. Yep. I'll just get him. Okay. Yep. So he goes wandering, so, so, so Aunt sorry, Harriet and Bruce are playing diff, chess diff, somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Aunt Harriet's in the room. Different room, yeah. yeah. Just, let's just, you know, you're, you are the Batman, so let's just say, you know, Bruce Wayne. Yeah. Yep, so we'll say, Excuse me, sir! Hang on! There's something here for you! <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know, but your bat phone's ringing, Master Bruce! Just thought you should know, cause, cause Jim Gordon's looking for you, Batman. I mean, Master, <laughs> Master Bruce. Master Bruce. <laughs> yeah, talk about being bad at your job, though. He does that, then he goes into fucking. He's got one job, and even the narrator's calling out for that on oh, this episode. Oh, I'm sorry. K. Rhyme is calling for you, sir, <laughs> on the bat phone <laughs> in the other room. That sounds like crime! <laughs> but yeah, oh, for this oh, same me. episode, same episode, the fucking narrator calls Alfred out. I know. But Have you forgotten your one fucking job, Alfred? You had one job, Alfred! Oh, what, what, what's my next move? <laughs> this is more replacing cigarette holders! <laughs> Maybe it's British people, they just forget what they're supposed to fucking do. Oh god. Uh, this this is the second time that um they've tried to bug Penguin and he got and got busted by one of his little bug transmitter yep. d- yep. d- things. Yep. I think he, he learned the learn. first time. Mm. Oh, well, they, Batman didn't, that's for sure. <laughs> but wait, it was Alfred's problem, not Batman's. <laughs> yeah, I just love the idea they can send this dude in right to um like I would send Alfred in to do it and it's a way if he gets caught. Well, He's just at Bruce Wayne's butler. We'll do the math. And I, I did, I did, I got to admit, I did love the fact that he was from Floyd's of Ireland. Yeah. That was that. That was a brilliant. Like I love little fucking dumb tweet. That was that was a nice like. Well done. Yeah. Went on that one. Now let's talk some more some more shit that uh, oh. that got us upset in this one. Now, at one point, the Batmobile gets stolen. 
Yeah. So Batman on the bat cycle that we saw earlier is following it. So he takes over it remotely. And how does he yeah. do that, you ask? With a bat steering wheel. What's that bat wheel look like? That. Where am I? He controls the fucking boat. The Batmobile is, is legitimately a boat. And he's controlling it with a f- f- like fucking... A f- a f- Mate, how... At- it's, it's like if that's an inch. It's like if that's an inch. Symbol. It's a... Fu- you know the... You know the thumbstick on a PS4 controller? It's, it's that. No! Oh! It's the fucking... I don't know if you guys were ever this the retro, but the the old um, I think four it means by, old. Four, no, no, four by four uh, yeah, off road like where you had the, the the arcade game and all you had was a steering wheel like this. Yeah, yeah, but I just yeah. think that's bigger though. The steering wheel. This I reckon is, uh, it's, it's just like a fucking winch <laughs> for a fishing line <laughs> or a cotton thread spool. <laughs> it's an old singer's sewing machine. But yeah, that's pretty bad. <laughs> it's get that shit off my screen. Pretty bad. <laughs> and finally. Finally, before we let go of this, um, before we talk what made it great. Is your phone ringing, sir? <laughs> one last thing. Terry. Oh, God. Which one was this? Spotted something amazing in this episode. And that was the... Oh, my favourite screen grab of all screen grabs. Now, I'm, I'll am going bring it up and then you can talk because I don't want to spoil it. You ready? Ladies and gentlemen at home, enjoy this while we break this down for you. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, Batman in the Batcave drinking a glass of milk. Lordy. So yeah, we've got and Burt Ward in the background just shoving his sandwich. Farm pissed. He, did, he didn't even realize the fucking cameras were rolling, mate. That's just Burt Ward. Yeah. So, no acting required there. What's there, you fat fucking fuck? Not any seconds. <laughs> Shovel it in your like, fucking <laughs> pig. <laughs> Can I get a liter of cola? His, legit, <laughs> his cheeks are bulging from that. Yeah. Mate, he just he hand fist that sandwich. He's not fucking around. He don't want to wait. Adam's just sitting there just. Adam West, well, Batman's milk. having his milk. Batman's doing the right thing. Burt Ward's just carving the fuck up. <laughs> Stop carving up. Craft services is for your downtime, Burt Ward. Take it easy, mate. <laughs> Fuck's sake. Alfred's not too bad at getting you fattened up, is he? Not bad. That's why he's so busy forgetting what he's supposed to do. He's got to make you fucking sandwiches galore, you fat gluttonous prick. Why don't you go host MasterChef? You cravat. fat cravat wearing piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you diabetic fat fucking... Bringing down the fucking economy because we got to take care of your fat ass in a hospital, you diabetic gout, one foot having fucking. You didn't have another dick, mate. You threw a fucking hernia out because your stomach started protruding out of your stomach so fucking much. You thought it was your fucking another dick. It wasn't. It was diverted ticolitis from all the shit you ate, and your fucking intestines got engorged. You fat fucking shoveling shit into your face. Fucking cunt. Wow. There goes our PG rating. Get that shit off the yeah, air. Look, see you later, you fucking ham fisting, handbag loving. Jerry, you look like Jerry Lawler. You keep eating that shit up. Job of the hut, motherfucker. <laughs> 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 anyway, Penguin was amazing in this episode. Oh, Penguin, just, is oh, Penguin was great. He Penguin was just great. Married, man. Just he's, everything. He was so cocky and he's great. Like, he was just hilarious. Like, just everything about him. He's great. Watching him trying to make out with that Sophia star oh. as well with his big fucking nose. <laughs> yeah, he's got a nose. He can't reach anything. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, more, so good. It is useful for something. Oh my! Eye. Smelling per smelling rats. Sure. <laughs> Mad got it. <laughs> exactly. <great. laughs> exactly. But yeah, I mean, Bird's bird is <laughs> it Is it because he can do a good impression? He can go to a costume party as one of those birds that drops yeah, into the yeah, water? Is that what it is? That's it. That's 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 it. <laughs> Your fucking porch right now. Um, <laughs> what the fuck is a porch rhino? <laughs> Penguin's nose. It's, hey, you can use your porch rhino nose for all sorts of stuff. <laughs> fucking porch rhino. See, it's not offensive. <laughs> Just adding the word rhino to the word porch. It's not, it's not offensive. That's how you do it, son. You've got to sidestep these legal boundaries. So what did you porch rhinos think of this show overall? Uh, I enjoyed it. That's good. It was definitely the best one this TV. week of TV. Yeah, it was pretty uh, good. Yeah, I enjoyed it. I give it a three. A three? Okay. Yeah, give it a three. And uh, got any Cranston's or Barbara's? Penguin, Cranston. Porch Penguin. I don't think you can say that. They, they're mainly they're mainly <laughs> black. I think that's penguins are black and white. So are pandas. Are pandas are just stupid fucking creatures that don't understand how to procreate. It's true. 
I still love the Ricky Gervais joke to go off when we talk about pandas that there's an aphrodisiac made in China from grand panda penis mm. and he's like do they like give that to pandas they're like alright I'm ready to go oh no you took my dick <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh, what are you giving it Matt? Cranston goes to Penguin but actually being a brilliant penguin being a brilliant penguin <laughs> <laughs> Cranston <laughs> <laughs> I almost want to say, uh, sorry, my Barbara goes to Batman and Burt Ward because the Penguin really had him had him fooled about what the fuck they were doing. Penguin was winning for a fair while, and 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 <laughs> Penguin wins. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> gloves two. Okay. Be conservative with his glove count. Tweets. <sighs> Cranston definitely Burge Meredith. Braden had a Burge Meredith. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It's uh, a, and that, that says to me, because it's very rare you get a Cranston and a Braden here. <laughs> uh, Barbara, Aunt Harriet. <laughs> oh. Yeah. No, no take back seats. Alfred. Alfred. Oh, yeah, Alfred. Alfred also gets... What we had? We had Elicity's Eli- uh, Ovaries or something. Felicity's Ovary Awards for yeah. if, you can't, if you need to split the split the Barbara. Yes. Yeah. So like Alfred and, and Harriet, two, do- two oldies. Uh, I'd say three and a half, four gloves. Hashtag oh. retro and listen. I actually really enjoyed it. Because of the uh Just the because narrative. of Penguin. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Seriously. If you give me Emerge <laughs> no, no. or Frank Gorshin in an episode, I'm like... <laughs> no, I, I was thinking like a retro and listening with oh, Alfred and Aunt Harriet. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe they're the parent. Maybe they're the grandparents of Elicity. No. If Ruth is Felicity's mother. Yeah. Um, we've cracked that code as well. Yeah. Bang. From the Batcave, cracking codes since 2015. Yeah, sure. <laughs> since, <laughs> since the 90s. Didn't say which one. Um, <laughs> there's a callback for you. Now, I, I'm giving a Cranston to Burgess Meredith as well. He is... Out, he's not, he he's is not, Frank Gorshin, He's going to say, he's not Frank Gorshin, but fuck, he's close. The only, as I say, it's just Frank Gorshin's he, acid that puts him over the edge. Yep, yeah, he's up there. That's four Cranstons. Yep, that is. So he's up there for the Cranston of the Year. Yep. Um, so yeah, Burgess Meredith, yeah, definitely in the runner for for, for Cranston of the Year. Uh, Alfred probably deserves the Barbara Award for, uh, for as Matt said, his amazing skills, shit. his amazing skills with his K rhyme covering. <coughs> but no, I'm giving it to Burt Ward because look, once again, look at this fat fucking shit. Shovel it in, you fat fucking turd. Oh, he's the Jeremy Clark Shovel of the f- <laughs> 66 Batman. Mate, he's the he is. <laughs> He's something. He's defi- he's, he, he go- he's going to go on to become the blob in time, you fat shit. That is true. The yes. costume department is probably like, you fucking kidding me? We can't afford any more girdles right, so for this I'll, fat um, cunt. I'll just cancel that email to Burt Ward's manager. No, oh, please don't. Please, <laughs> Bert, you sent an email to Burt Ward, he just eat it. Mmm, digital. <laughs> print no it off calories. And, print it off, smear it with fucking butter and eat it. Probably deep fry it. Fucking hand fisted in his face. In fact, I'll go you back. I okay, guarantee this was the 60s. He was probably eating like a fucking fax or a floppy disk or something. <laughs> eating a fucking scroll of tape. Five. <laughs> oh, yeah. Eating an 8 track. Yeah. <laughs> he's eating fucking no, Burgess Meredith's eating, rubber no, nose. He's, he's eating the old computer reels. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fucking like 10 inch reel. Yeah. I reckon yeah. what he's eating. Remember the remember the, the science gloves that Batman wore when he does Over science? Bullets, yeah. I reckon he's, reckon he's eating that. Fat shit. Man, eat a sandwich. Doesn't even know how to eat a sandwich. Probably the useless fat fucking shithead. <laughs> He's just used to having everything in a fucking pace so he can drink it. Less calories spent that way, isn't he? Chewing. You like Don't want to waste calories chewing. That's too much like exercise, you fat shit. Don't want to have to open the fucking door. You start bending the fucking Batmobile. Would you like it all separate or would you like it blended up in a bucket, sir? He's, yeah, that's bucket. He just puts it in a fucking IV. <laughs> Get me a bucket. Shit. I'll go with <laughs> sick. And then continues to eat his vomit again. So, yeah, I give this three gloves. <laughs> Alright, so this week we are talking Superman, Batman, Public Enemies.
right, so there we go. So, what did you guys think of this film as the overall? And then I'll get into it because uh, I see it. I think I'll see it a very different way from the three of you, which I'll explain last. So, what did you guys think of this film? The animation style was very childish. Okay. But what I will say, the context, the language, the social subject matter mm -hmm. was mature. So I found it to be quite interestingly... Uh, a very interesting crossover between the two. Um, mm. Overall, for me, it was actually a very good representation of what Superman and Batman should be. Yep. Uh, I loved the use of different heroes and different villains. Um, I love the fact that um, one of Adam's favourite heroes appeared... Uh, villains appeared in it. Um, using his ability to control multiple... That was exciting. Damn, that was amazing. Uh, uh, just, just to yeah. interject, you know how you were talking about the the animation style mm. in the film? Yeah, that's a panel from the actual comic. The so the animation style yeah. is pretty much bang on bang as on. what it looks in the comics. Yeah. Maybe for me, if I look at that comic, if I, I may have a look at that comic, I mean, in paper form for me, it always feels differently and looks differently on paper yep. than it does on the screen. I mean, for me, it's probably because the colours in this are very vibrant mm -hmm. compared to what you saw, what I saw on the um, in the movie. Yep. So it's very vibrant. I'll get into so the, I'll get into the comment. There's a reason I brought the comic out with me. I'll get into that in, mm -hmm. in a few minutes. But it's, it, it is a it was uh, I haven't seen it. I sort of because I've I've seen it before and I saw the cover. I'm like, wow, that looks a lot like a kids' film. If you look at the DVD cover. Yep. But watching it now, it's like, well, I actually really... Pre I'm, I'm glad we actually got there's to... A, there's a lot of adult look. themes in this. Yeah, that's what like, the social uh, chat about it was, like the social undertones. Well, Luther alone in this is very... It's weird. It's, it's very... It's very sinister. Almost... It feels to me like it's representative of, the, of almost what the, the, the hyped up version of what the Bush government were like. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's I agree. How it me. But anyway, continue. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I didn't have much else to say. Like, It's just because... Yeah, it just... The animation style, I think... I mean, I'm a fan of 1990s anime, so I think that could yep. have worked with it. So that's just my biased opinion. Um, but I did like the social commentary. I loved how Batman was portraying my man, Kevin Conroy. Once again, beautiful uh, job. Same with Tim Daly did Superman in this one. Tim Daly's the guy who voiced Superman in the <coughs> Superman anime <coughs> series. It's the same two dudes from yep. the... Excellent. So that continuity. <laughs> um, so I do like Tim Daly as Superman. Um, like I said, the use of different heroes in different situations, and I found myself becoming a fan of Captain Captain Atom as well mm. because of this. So yeah, I enjoyed it thoroughly. You'll become even more of a fan of Captain Atom. Mm -hmm. in, in the report. Excellent, Matt. What do you think? I love this. I um I actually rate this pretty highly. Um, I watched it. Uh, to be honest, I only watched it last night, but I watched it again today. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I actually watched it twice last night and again today because um, I actually really, really enjoyed it. And um, it was, again, something something different, but it didn't feel different, if you know what I mean. It mm -hmm. um, it felt like it had continuity with other... I like the, the grittiness of the fact that Superman is not used to being a vigilante. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm. And Batman, Batman is was just like, used to it. <laughs> and Batman is just like, well, works for me. <laughs> just, just go with it. Just go with it. Just go with it. Um, fine. But there was, there was so much about this that I loved, and there was so much about the characters, Superman and Batman, and the relationship between the two that I absolutely loved. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, right at the start, Batman's like, don't, don't go to this meeting. He's like, you're going to go to the meeting, aren't you? <laughs> He's like, you. I, <laughs> I'm not going to save you. Not, I don't expect you to. <laughs> yeah. 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 There that, anyway. That, that whole line, it was just like, it was perfect. It was like, yeah, that's Superman because he's now arrogant son of a bitch. Yeah. And at the same time, Batman's arrogant, but in a, in a way that he's right. Yeah. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 I absolutely loved it. Um, again, as I said, I, I watched it three times in the last 48 hours. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I have not, not gone. No, I don't like this once. Every time I've watched it, I'm like, yep, yeah, this is sick. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I came up with a theory. I've got a bit of VCF, which is Virgin Comic Syndrome. Uh, mm -hmm. Virgin Comic Fan Syndrome. Yep. Because mm -hmm. um, I don't know a lot of the backstory. Mm -hmm. I had no idea half the villains and, and heroes and whatever and else that were fighting Batman and Superman. I 
didn't know half, or le le less than half. I know, I think, I'm pretty sure that Power Girl is actually Oracle. No. No? Okay, we've seen. I don't got no fucking idea. Batgirl is Oracle. Oh, okay. Um, but anyway, I, I've, I've got a lot to learn so in that. Power Girl is. Uh, Big Boo's McGee. There, <laughs> there are. Before the, the, the crisis, the second crisis that brought all the multiple worlds together, there were multiple worlds. He's leaning in for a kiss. And, oh, hang on. Bat phone, sir! <laughs> 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 Yeah, um, that's right. Just lie the gimp down. He's out of. He's counted out for nothing. Yeah, but they're basically there are multiple. Imagine there's multiple realities. So there's multiple supergirls. Yep. Power girl is a supergirl. Right. And the whole point with the thing in her chest is she lands in whatever alternate reality it is. There's, there's a Superman as well, but she because the S is the House of L symbol, she doesn't know who she is. So she she says, I'm going to work out one day what symbol to put there. And that's the running gag is there's an, uh, that she left an opening without thinking because of, well, my symbol will go there. Mm. But then just I've never, done, I don't know what my symbol is. Yeah. So, that, so oh, fair she enough. has that. Um, and then obviously when all the worlds got pushed together, you just have multiple super girls. And power girl just happens to be. Fair enough. Okay. Um, I loved Luther in this. Um, this is proper Lex Luthor. This is what Lex Luthor yeah. is meant to be, a, a, a maniac. He's, he's proper nuts, yeah. He's a power-crazy maniac. Love yeah. Luther in this. Um, and at the same time, I fucking hate him. Yep. Like, he, he, that's, and, that's the and, point and of Lex Luthor. That's, that's what I'm Lex saying. Lex Luthor is the, the biggest heel in the business, baby. And and that's why I, I think that I love him so much, is yep. because he this character of Lex Luthor was portrayed so well, so much so that I... And hated him and any time he started speaking I was just like I want to choke the life out of your, your face yep mm -hmm. yep okay. alright Brad what do you what do you get to say about it? honestly you guys have covered a lot of what I was going to say <laughs> um, from the being a use of different characters that we're not typically used to seeing which is good mm -hmm. um, the relationship between Batman and Superman and oh, uh, it was amazing Super yeah and yeah, Superman being more of a vigilante, I really like the part when they're going through the sewers and Batman's like, welcome to my world. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I still love the line where Superman's like, what happened to all the good villains? Yeah. Like, what the hell is a good villain? <laughs> <laughs> um, Dumbass. Favorite. Yeah, look, this... Yeah. this yeah. I'm, I'm going to get into talking about this a little bit. Okay. I, for the longest time, refused to buy any comic with this person in it. Just flat out refused to. And I bought this. I went into a comic book store one day and I wanted to. I had time to kill, so I decided I'm going to buy a comic. And I tend to buy trades in those situations, the single issues, because obviously it's like seven issues in a book. Mm. And so I'm wandering around, I'm looking for something to buy, and I went, well, Jeplo, who is the, the head writer of this, writes, wrote, and write, has written some of the, most, the best Batman stories. So I saw that, I saw Batman, and I'm like, oh, Superman, and I kind of read the thing about, okay, so they're against the law in this episode. That sounds really cool. And then, um, this comic's very different from the film, but very similar. Mm -hmm. It starts off with the fact Superman and Batman are not friends. Okay. In this. Super, uh, Batman saves Superman from the pretty much the same situation we see, mm -hmm. but his, ver his reasons for doing it is just simply... You're at the moment, you're too important to let die. <laughs> That's basically... Le lesser of two evils. Yeah, it's basically the premise behind it. Um, and there's a few, like, I won't get into all those few things. We get end up with, uh, remember Future Superman with the white streaks in his hair? He actually turns up at one point and does something that's very cool, which is that panel. Nice. Lifts up the 66 Batmobile. <laughs> so that, that was very cool. But the, the biggest change in this, of everything, very, it's a very similar story except for the mm. end. And the end of this, the same way Hero, the toy maker, builds the mm -hmm. machine. We'll get into the, like, have you seen the plot? You know what happens, but we'll get into to more about Hero and shit later. But mm -hmm. Hero builds the, the rocket ship. Mm -hmm. And Batman, in, in the film, Batman jumps into the ship. So it seems like he sacrificed himself. In this one, because you know how in, the, in the, the movie Captain Adam disappears? Yes. Just vanishes? He turns back up moments before the ship is due to be launched with a kryptonite with Lex's kryptonite ring punches Superman into unconsciousness and turns to Batman and says give me the thing give me the keys nice 
and takes the shuttle up and, and kills himself. And instead of that moment of Superman punching Luthor and being like, you killed my best friend or whatever, he's just like, how many times do I have to keep kicking? Like, it's basically, how many times do I have to kick the shit out of you before you fucking realise I'm going to do this until you understand it? And he just he just pounds him and in the end he grabs the front of his suit yeah. and just goes, your presidency is over and punches him out of his suit. Damn. <laughs> and then just drops the suit and like, pretty much, and uh, it gets to... And so you get to the end of it, and it's not it's till the end that we boom. Fight. It's not till the end. Yeah, pretty much. So he punches him out of the suit, and Lex is basically like just left in a crumpled heat on the edge of the building, and Batman turns up. Yeah. And uh, Lex makes some comment about uh, what happened to, to how John Corbin died, because at that point we don't realize who killed him, mm. and it's at that moment that Batman's like, "How do you know about John Corbin?" Yeah. And he joins the dots, and Luthor makes some comment about the Wayne's death, and he's like, "What do you know about the death of the Wayne's? Tell me everything you need to know." Basically, holds him over the edge of a building. Yeah. Uh, oh no, sorry. Luthor's holding onto the edge of a building, and he's like, "You have to save me." And Batman's like, "I have to do jack shit. You're gonna tell me what you know." Yeah. And Luthor's like, "I'm not telling you anything." And literally, Batman lets him drop. Batman lets him drop, and there's a boom, and he's like, "I hope that was a boom tube, but if it wasn't, damn, have I really have we really lost anything here?" And Lex just disappears. And Superman turns up and he's like, what the hell did you do? And Batman's like, he slipped. That's all he says. He slipped. Bye. And so, yeah, they get to the end and, and it's kind of a very similar thing where at the end he's like, the sun's coming up and, and Batman's like, yeah, well, that's my cue to leave. Yeah. Well, I think there's people cheering. He's like, this is really uncomfortable <coughs> for me. Yeah. He's like, I'm supposed to operate in the shadows. I don't think I can do that. Yeah. Like this. And uh, it basically ends with, you know, Superman being like, well, you know what? What like? What if you need my help again? And Batman does the usual laugh. I'm like, yeah, good luck with that. And he's like, don't worry, you'll see me again. <laughs> like, you know, they're kind of like, you know, bro, let's be serious. Yeah. You're shit at your job. Yeah. I'm better. At <laughs> so yeah, and then yeah, he just kind of wanders off, and and they have um, the next one is Superman, Batman, Supergirl, and mm. um, so on and so forth. They're great. They're great. These, these honestly, mm. the Superman Batman series is the best series, the best ongoing. Yeah. Series Marvel uh, DC have ever written, yeah. cool. hands down. It's fucking incredible. And yeah, and like uh, I think I've, I told you this off the air last week, Terry, because you asked me a few questions about this. Mm. The thing I love about the comics and why I'm going to sell people on the comics mm. is that in the comics, everything that happens to them, they just like okay. This like, there's one that deals with Bizarro turns up and then Batzaro turns up, <laughs> right? Yeah. And you would think a situation like that, you would be like, who is the who are these idiots? Batman's mm. just like, okay. Fair enough. Just this this one I'm dealing with. Whatever. I'm Batman. Yeah. <laughs> but he just gets more and more like throughout each one. Like the first one is like, okay, we deal with this <laughs> shit. So then Supergirl turns up and he's like, I thought you were the only Kryptonian. <laughs> and like, there's a moment where they, Superman and uh, Supergirl talk in Kryptonian to each other, and it's like a panel. By the next page, Batman has been let, taught himself to be fluent in Kryptonian because he doesn't like the fact they're having conversations he can't understand. <laughs> Um, so that happens. then they meet Wonder Woman that episode and again he, uh, that, that book and again he's like this is just this is getting ridiculous yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, so he just, oh, just keeps piling on the plot there, and, then, and then there's one where they go searching for all the kryptonite and there's like this like massive pile under the ocean and he's just like oh, I'm gonna have to get all that aren't I <laughs> like it's just he's just constantly <sighs> stated like for fuck's sake I'm tired of cleaning if you weren't Superman, I'd fucking kill you because you're so <laughs> annoying. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's just so amazing how exasperated yeah. he is. Um, but yeah, the, the biggest... So yes, yeah, so Captain Adam is actually the hero of this book. Excellent. And to me, you watch the film mm. and it's very clear Captain Adam is meant to have a redemption story they don't give him. Mm. Mm. But yeah, the, the scenes that, are, that do work in this film so well are Batman and Superman end up facing off against just wave after wave of dudes and they're just like caning them out and mm. whatever mm -hmm. else. And I love the fact Superman to ultimately, the only way you can take them down is to create a, uh, basically creates a tornado. Yeah. But Batman just disappears. Yeah. Like literally just <laughs> like, not even a smoke bomb. He just disappears, which in my head, the minute Superman started doing that, he was like, yeah, I know where this is going. <laughs> yeah. I'm out here. Fuck this shit up. Yeah, out. pretty much. And, just, <laughs> and he's out. So, yeah. loved it. Absolutely loved it. Excellent. That's, yeah, it's one of those movies that you just can't help but love, to be honest. No, I, I really did love this movie. I love it. I can't, I love I can't talk Batman. enough about how much I love this. Yeah. Well, is there anybody else, anything, have anybody got anything else they'd like to just... I wouldn't have minded seeing in the end, like I did enjoy the end, but I wouldn't have minded actually seeing Batman die from that. Mm. 
would have been interesting. Well, that, that's, that's why, obviously, it's Captain Adam in the thing, because he does, he dies. Captain Adam sacrifices yeah. himself, and I think Superman even makes that point of, like, how many people have to die before you stop Luthor? Mm. Like, that's yeah. why he gets mm. so mad, because he's like, this, just, you just keep killing people. Mm. It's basically yeah. the, the Batman's Joker age, where it's like, you keep killing people, yeah. and, yeah, like, they took just never death out of the movie. Stop. Yeah. Mm. I am going to have to kill you just to, to save... Yeah, millions. pretty much. Yeah, basically. So, yeah, I'll agree with you on that, that but, I, but how do you kill Batman? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a goddamn yeah. Batman. Now, Matt, you found a bit of a bit of trivia, though, for this film during this week. Yeah, um, having children and, and watching children's films and everything else, I remember when Big Hero 6 came out. Mm-hmm. And oh, I, and I get I vaguely remember seeing a Marvel stamp behind... DC, the... you mean? DC. Is it DC? No, 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 no. no. There's oh, ma- it, in Big Hero 6, it's Marvel. Yeah. Oh, really? Stan- Marvel. Stan Lee is in the after credits scene of Big Hero 6. He, he is, too. He then is, I would yeah. say that what you picked up on may actually be an homage, not a direct... Well, I, I could have sworn... I, I could be wrong. I'll, yep. I'll check it again. But I could have sworn when I was looking through the trailers... For this movie, I thought I saw a Marvel stamp behind it. I, to Big Hero Six. Yeah, but, but to Big Hero we're 6. watching a DC film. Yeah. So you would have been at Marvel and Disney, and it may be. But what I'm saying is that what you the connection you thought you drew was that Hero the toy maker built Big Hero Six. And what yeah. I'm saying is, if that's the case, it's an homage because Marvel don't own the toy, toy maker. maker. That's yeah. a DC property. Hmm. Yeah. Um, Although they do even look similar and everything. They look same similar, name. same age, same IQ, all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, Hero. Loves building robots and and so does Toymaker. So does Toymaker and, and Toyman. Sorry, Toyman. Toyman. Toy so he also likes so, yeah. Power Girl's boobs. <laughs> but who doesn't? <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there was like a, a moment of like, well, hang on, these have to be the same character. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, even, they're very similar. I'll agree. I thought the same thing when I first saw uh, Toyman. Uh, Toy mm. So it was so, kind of weird and freaked me out a little bit. But yeah. That's what I took. It out does from. seem, looking on the internet, I'm just doing some quick research. Yeah, it, it, it seems to me like what they've done is base Hero, big, he, Hero in Big Hero Six on Hero the Toy. I'd, I'd say it's probably a, it is a like a, 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 an homage to a yeah, cool character probably, where yeah, they have gone. That's a cool little. Yeah, it's probably Pixar, P- some, Pixar's homage to it or Disney yeah. Pixar's homage. Yeah. So um, yeah, I, I did, like the sim- similarities are just overwhelming. Mm. Um, yeah. But I, I did love the cockiness of, of Hero. I mean, this is like, yeah. find a 13 year old with an IQ of 210. Good luck with that. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck with that. Let me know how you go. <laughs> when I built this thing, I was really he's pretty much into like Hero that. worship. He's pretty much like that in the comics. In the comics, he's the lion. Um, will it work? Does Power Girl have big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I think Batman does the same thing where he's like, all right, Hero. <laughs> I like how he, um, Power Girl comes in and, and uh, she's like, well. He's 13, he's barely a man, and Superman's just like, yeah, whatever. Mm. <laughs> you, you're not coming in? It's no, just I'm like, I'm staying as close this, as I need to. Who is, who's this smart and has this much money when they're young? I, I did. <laughs> I just didn't like toys. <laughs> but yes, you did. You just built yours for a different purpose. Just brilliant. But yeah, um, all right, let, let, let's let's hand out some Cranston's. Let's, let's hand out some awards to this thing. Mm-hmm. Cranston. It is a very, it's a very it's hard very thing. To do Cranston, I'm giving mine to Captain Adam because Captain Atom because just he won me over in this. Yep. Uh, for my Barbara, I'm going for an even tie between Metello and Major Force. Mm-hmm. And there's no other rewards to give out, but I'm going to give this a solid four and a four point seven five gloves. I rate this very highly. Okay. I'll probably end up like if I read the comic, I'll probably rate that a five. Oh, the comics are five. Yeah. The comics are five. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Done okay, Matt. Um, I'm very hard pressed to find a Barbara because um, I did like uh, I did like Metallo um, as a, a villain. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought that was very cool, and that he how he can reconfigure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I love that. I love how he picked up the Kryptonite and and basically turned himself to a guy and shot this Kryptonite pellet at, at Superman. I, th- I thought that was brilliant. That led mm-hmm. to my favourite line in the whole thing. Yeah. Um, flash when you need him. Close to your heart. <laughs> um, Do his favour and buy a sense of humour. Um, so I, I don't think I can find myself a Barbara. Yep. Because I didn't feel like there was a person in there that was a hobag. Standard to you. Yeah. 
Well, the barber and isn't necessarily a hoe bag award. Oh, That's the felicity. The yeah. barber is just for a useless character who brings nothing to I the don't, show. I don't think I've but found... But there really isn't one in this I comic. I didn't find one in this. Yeah. Um, and my... My Cranston's actually going to go to Lex because I actually felt him as a threat. Well, Lex is actually the first build... Clancy Brown is the first build person in the cast. So Lex Luthor matters more than... Tim Daly, Kevin Conroy. But, yeah... Batman and Robin, uh, Batman and Superman, yeah. But yeah, so I, I'm I'm gonna you give almost it. Almost said it. You almost said it. Yeah. Of course I have it. <laughs> Le- Lex Lex gets my Cranston. Nice. And gloves. Five. Wow. Oof. I I re- as I said I've, I've watched it three times the last forty eight hours. I'm gonna love this movie. But, but wait till Apocalypse. Then I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts oh. next week on Apocalypse. Oof. Braden, what are you giving this one? Uh I'm going to definitely go with Lex for the Cranston. Yep. Uh, I'm gonna give an honourable mention to Grod. <laughs> that was a, a pretty oh, yeah. smart way of trying to take on Superman for a billion dollars. Hell yeah! Think of doing it sooner. Grundy but... now feel good. Grundy's gonna feel a lot worse. <laughs> um, that's my that's my favorite line in the film. Yeah. Is Grundy's gonna feel a lot worse? It's just <laughs> yeah. proceeds to kick the shit out of him. <laughs> don't no. Nah, I don't have a Barbara. I cannot think of a Barbara whatsoever. Yeah, 4.75. Wow. All right, my Barbara... I have two Barbaras for this. My Barbaras go to Captain Marvel and Hawkman. I love Captain Marvel. He's so good. I, I love the character, but not just, in this. They're both just... Like, Hawkman especially. Hawkman's Oh, like, he's useless. I know Hawkman's a conservative to the max, but bro. <laughs> <laughs> How can you be conservative when you've got leather chaps... Uh, Fuck straps you, straps take on. Nipples? Like, come on, it's... It's fucking Batman and it's Superman. There's no way that both of them are on the wrong side of the law. Yeah. Like, bro. Yeah. Bro, I did love the fact that they both just dressed up with them and rolled in the legs and like, yeah, we're here. Yes, in the comic, really. it's the other way around. In the comic, he assumes that Superman will dress as Captain Marvel. Mm. And so he grabs, he goes to like kryptonite at him and Captain Marvel goes like, oh, oh, and like plays down on it mm. and gets him close enough and then like he just punches him out and like it's Bruce as Captain Marvel and Superman's dressed as Hawkman. It's Fucking so stupid is that? Sorry, Superman's Hawkman. Yeah, brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Anyway, um, so they get my Cranston, uh, my my Barbara's, I should say. My Cranston actually goes to Grodd. Yeah, because totally. it is. That's just it's the best use of your power. And yeah, even reading the comic, as I'm reading the comic, I'm like, because oh, it's a few pages before they work out it's Grodd. And I'm reading the comic the first time, and I was like, oh, I cannot work out who this villain is, because I'm like, that's really weird for Grundy and whatever. Yeah. And then when they got there, I was like. I didn't even see that coming. That was fucking amazing. Very Especially mm. when, he's finally, when he's finally like, I heard a gorilla's heartbeat. Yeah. It's mm. like, wow, that was so clever. Yeah. So beautifully clever. And even down to, like, I love the fact that Superman and Batman work like a team, even down to, like, we're fighting the wrong guy. Switch. Switch, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, just brilliant. Uh, and as for grading, gratings, gratings, ratings, grottings, 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 <laughs> four gloves, four fingers. That's decent. That's good. That's a full Because it, it is very clear. The only reason it doesn't get five is because I've read the, the comic. Yeah. But as a standalone film, I'd probably give it five. Mm, but absolutely. it just is tainted that little bit because I know what the ending could have been. Could have like, been. And probably you... should have been. Yeah. There's no reason why they shouldn't have done that. Absolutely. The only reason they didn't was to have Batman save the day and he didn't need to. He saved the day eight times in the fight. He saved Superman. Yeah. Twice. He saved <laughs> Superman twice. Braden, quick question for you. Did you... Yeah. This is, the, is this the sort of animated movie you let the kids watch? Yeah, the kids watched it. Yeah? Um, I didn't watch it with them. I started watching it last night, and I had to go to bed, so I didn't get to watch the last 25 minutes of it. Okay. Uh, come home from work this afternoon and went to go put it on, and my, my oldest son, uh, oh, I already watched it today. You had, you had it paused, so I started back at the start, and he was raving on about how much he loved it. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, oh, hey, no, hey. even he, like my five-year-old son, loved the shit out of this movie was, today. I was about to say, did you go to bed before your son did? No, 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 he watched it this morning. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So it's That's got the good. kid seal of approval as well. Yep, mm. it does. Maybe we should have special awards for kid-friendly animated DC awards. Yeah. I think, pretty, like, I, think the, the I think the kid-friendly award is a Braden Hare award, isn't it? No, 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 no that's kid offensive. <laughs> Oh, no, that's geez. the pedo hair you're, you're going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> He's already halfway there, he's a ginger. <laughs> he's already been cursed. Look, man. He, hey, hey, hang on. He can't go to hell because gingers don't have souls. Oh, that is true. That is oh, true. I'm really scared to go into a fictitious fucking place, too. <laughs> there is probably one more award I could give out for this film. What's that? 
It's, very, very, it's a very special award. Oh, okay. It's one I haven't given out before. It's uh, I guess if, you, if you're going to give out the opposite <laughs> of a Braden Hare Award... Yes. Because Braden Hare Award is a little bit rapey. It's not a pedo <laughs> award, it's a rape award, I hope you know, sir. Braden's Hair is for like rapey behaviour. That is the actual award title. It's the Braden Hair Award for like rapey behaviour. <laughs> I should know. I invented it. Actually, Lex would get that because he puts the move on Amanda Waller. That's the kryptonite. Uh, oh yeah, God! Sure. Maybe he likes himself some thick black woman. I nearly gave Amanda she Waller like, uh, out from that my um, Barbara, Barbara as well. But I, I, I went against it a lot. She's not bad in that, this one though. But there is. But yes, yeah, so I think if we're going to give an award for humanitarians. And things like that. Then there is one ward, and it needs to be given in one person's name. And his name is John C. <laughs> oh, so if there is going to be from now on, if we need to put out an award for uh, for humanitarian behaviour, mm -hmm. we'll be giving out the John Cena. Okay. okay. The John Cena. So we've got the Cranston, the Cena, the Bradens. So in the comic, Captain Atom is the gets the John Cena award. All yeah. right. Well, that brings us to the end of another episode, gentlemen. It does. So Aww. let's move on to answering. So we had some questions. We did. We did. We so did. let's start off first of all with questions. Queen's question oh. from last week. So, Braden, over the social media lounge, since it was admitted to us via social media. Yes. Do you have the question there? Since we hate Felicity so much, what would we do to change her so we would like her? His name is John Cena! That. <laughs> Replace her with John Cena? I'd watch it. Yeah, I would too. Hey man, let me ask you something. <laughs> if, if season three had ended with Ollie in the car and John Cena next to him and it'd been like, come on, let's run away together for the first time I'm happy, I wouldn't be upset. Like, yeah. imagine, okay, they get in the car and. and Jolliver. Like, hold Hashtag Jolliver. Hashtag jo Yeah, exactly. Um, Olena. So yes. he, he holds. <laughs> He holds the, you know, they're holding hands. Yeah. They go off in the sunset, and it's just like, he's like, I'm happy. Wiener. And I'm happy because of one person. And his name is John C. And the car just rolls off into the distance. <laughs> That's how it fades out. See, would you hate season three? It'd be like, yeah, progressive. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and we get a we get a gay green arrow as well. Uh, green arrow as well, which is nice. Or well, they could just be bro bro If you read, if you read, uh, yeah, they could be buddies. They could be just going on a road yeah. trip. Maybe they explain why Diggle would get upset as well. In fact, I've already written a better story than season three. But they'd probably uh, get matching neck tattoos. <laughs> but the upside of uh, the, I mean, look, it is Green Arrow who is the ultimate liberal and the ultimate like gay loving character. Mm. So it would fit. Definitely. All right, Matt, what would you do to replace? What to fix. fix? What I'll do is I'll have. Uh, Felicity stay with Ray. Ray. So you would never have broken him up in the first place? Left them together. Well, she's meant on... to be with Ray in the comics. So. I would lay jump on that one. I agree completely. And I'd give her a bit more of a season season one, start of two team yeah. as well. A bit more... She was a bit more independent. A bit, a bit more tough. A less Halle, Halle Berry and more... Yeah. Yeah. Beyonce. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> less Halle and more Beyonce. There's a hashtag for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah, I was I was I was gonna go with season one, reverted back to season one, season two, Felicity. But reverted since I recently found out she was in a Nickelback music video clip, just nah, kill her. <laughs> she was it's done. She wow, was. yeah, done with her. Trying to trying to get into Matt's good books for some reason. Or are you trying to get him to come over to Mole and fix your internet? <laughs> Yeah, I can't get anyone else. Oh, look, let, let's face it. I, get I'd, the mower to run out the MBN. What's he doing? <laughs> I would put one through her if she came in and said, look, here, Matt. Here's the other question. Would you have Felicity now or Felicity in college? College. Yeah. thought you would. The black hair, the guy. Yep. Yeah. Man, you, you know what, though? I'm going to give you quotes because I know that's an empty car. I know that's an empty can when I see an empty can, but at least you drank from it like a normal human as and opposed to like CW acting. You try to drink from the you, bottom you know, of fucking dumb asses. This is the problem we have here. One glove and motherfucker. And what was the badger the badger question? If you were a superhero, what sort of companion would you have? And what would it be? Alright. No, got Superman's got crypto. Ferret. <laughs> ferret. A ferret. A ferret. I, would, I thought you were going to say gerbil there for a second. I'm like, no. yeah, I can get that. Ferret. Okay. The probe in his ferret. Ferret. 
They're just so, so... A man and his ferret. <laughs> oh, basically, yeah, that, 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 that just reminded me to the um to the story that Brody's tell was a Brody telling yep. at the start of uh, Mallrats uh, with the gerbils. <laughs> 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 yeah, no ferrets. I, I used to have a ferret um back in the day, and we used to call him a little car. Did he get stuck in your asshole? No, no. Hang on, no. hang on, Matt. I want to see if this is the the story that you that you. One time my cousin Walter got this cat stuck in his ass. True story. He bought it at our local mall, so the whole fiasco wound up on the news. It was embarrassing for my relatives and all, but the next week he did it again. Different cat, same results, complete with another trip to the emergency room. So I run into him a week later in the mall and he's buying another cat. And I says to him, Jesus, Walt, what are you doing? You know you're just gonna get this cat stuck in your ass too. Why don't you knock it off? And he said to me, Brody, how the hell else am I supposed to get the gerbil out? My cousin was a weird guy. It's nothing like that story at all. No? <laughs> no oh, okay. I'm pretty sure it is. Braden, I'm pretty sure I'm with you. Uh, I'm with you. Name Probe and. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Mm -mm. Fuck this shit, I'm out. No thanks. Matt, who would you? You'd have your ferret. I'd have my ferret. Yeah, your ferret have a name. Genghis. Skidmark. Fuck you. Genghis. Genghis. Like Genghis Khan. Genghis, Genghis the ferret. Yeah. Okay, and what what are you and Genghis... How does Genghis the ferret help to probe? <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet. I just... I fucking want a ferret. <laughs> I'm, sure I'll, I'm sure I'll come up with something. Helps him get the oh, mice I'm out sure of his ass. I'm sure you'll come up with something too, yeah. How is she supposed to get the gerbil out of your ass? Fuck you lot! Uh, Brayden. <sighs> What animal are you inserting in people's asses? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not inserting in people's asses. I want, I want a fucking eagle so I can be like you want a fucking Superman eagle from he Dark Knight. He wants the fucking gerbil. He wants the fucking eagle. What? So you can be like Six Superman and eagle. sell out. You want a fucking eagle. Like a sell out Superman, you are. I want an eagle. So like what's Superman eagle in do? Dark Knight Returns Part Two, and I would dress in it in like I would, I would look fucking a puffy shirt, as. swashbuckler gear. With, yep, yep, yep. With me leg up and fucking and eagle. thinking about America and its freedom, and yeah. what is, what is the eagle? How does the eagle help the dad knight? Just, it just it just adds to my attractiveness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, this was a hard question. Are you going to use John Cena? No, well you told me last week I couldn't. It, no, you couldn't use. I wasn't allowed to use John That's Cena. Right, I thought about <laughs> using Batista because he's the beast, and I thought about using as the animal. Sorry, and I thought about using Brock Lesnar because he's a beast. Yeah. But uh, here's my answer. I'm going in an elephant. An elephant? Because think about it this way: you see a dude come <coughs> riding in, riding in on an elephant with like flight of the Valkyries a plane. You're not fucking with that guy. That's <laughs> yep. a dude you just like. Is Steve? Steve, look at this prick. Is he's that, got an elephant. Is that mate. bloke riding an, an elephant, Steve? And Steve yeah, I think he's like, mate. Yeah, he's riding an elephant. That's the point where you just see him. They'll just be like, no. Put the guns so down, how, how do you counter like poachers and stuff? I'm with the elephant, mate. If you're coming out, how are you gonna poach the elephant with me? There, I'm a thumb. Like, think about you're, it again. You're, um, you're a poacher, you're pretty, you're pretty poach, small. You're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that. Is that, a bloke, is that a bloke who is actually riding that elephant at full steam at me? No, no, fuck this shit. I'm out. Plus, I can have like a sniper rifle too. Just be riding towards the guy and be like, "Yeah." No, you just have a 50, 50 cal Gatling gun on the back of it. Because it takes more than one shot to take a fucking elephant down. Doesn't mm. take more than one shot to take a human down. He's done the math. I want a uh, Komodo dragon. Whoa! I thought you were gonna say honey badger. Why would I want another me? There's yeah. me and Kevin Owens. The food Owens. budget would be fucking <laughs> huge, mate. <laughs> <laughs> he ain't lying. Um, no, uh, well, uh, would be it would be like negative well. fucks given. Negative fuck. You owe me fucks. <laughs> That's how that would work. With an eagle. With an eagle. It's a fair, <laughs> fair. The free, yeah, bring the freedom ferret. <laughs> free, freedom ferret fucks. No, I'd, I'd, I'd take the uh, Komodo, like a uh, overly large Komodo dragon, like even bigger than what they go, because I want to ride it. But I like your elephant. The elephant idea is cool as well. But I like the idea of Komodo dragon as well, because they fucking scare the shit out of me. I've worked out, hey, Braden. Yeah. Paint the elephant in camouflage. Give it to right. camo shorts. Then and you like can't, a, yeah, no, then then you can't you, see my yeah. elephant. Possibly my eagle, my eagle can still see your elephant. And I also realised I didn't name my elephant, so very simply... His name is John C. Because <laughs> think about it, right? You Once again, you're lined up. Steve, 
Is that a fucking camouflage painted elephant with a bloke right on top of it with a green shirt that says Rise Above Hate on it? Yeah, and as I get close, you're like, am I hearing music? Yeah. And his name is John! Now you hear that coming at you. Are you sticking around or do you just know? You hear that music, you know. To quote John Cena in that song, you hear those horns, you finished. I'm a soldier, and I'll stay under your fight. <coughs> Plus, I'm storming on you, chumps. Like I'm thunder and lightning. But you can't see me. <laughs> my time is now. You can't see me because I'm camouflaged. Well, you can't see my elephant. You can probably see, you can see me in my bright shirt. But so so that's scary. So this, is, this dude just hovering. He's, looks yeah. like he's sitting on an elephant. As John Cena music plays. You're not getting the fuck out of Dodge at that point? I'm out. I'm, I'm fucking... There, there is like <laughs> a silhouette voodoo. of me like in a cartoon. Because I've gone poof <laughs> so fast. There's literally a shit... Just a smoke screen where I used to be. <laughs> If that's coming at me. Yeah. I haven't, I haven't named my my uh, eagle either, and I had a conversation with the mum knight the other other day, so, and I've already got a name reserved for our next pet. It's Diggle. I'm naming it Diggle. Nice. Diggle the eagle. Diggle. Diggle the eagle. Funny, diggle I would have eagle. thought that Matt's ferret would have been named Diggle, judging by what it does. It diggles. And I'm gonna give him a, I'm gonna give him a neck tattoo as well. <laughs> I hope your fucking eagle dies. <laughs> it probably will. Besmirching the it's fucking like bird. It, yeah, it would be like, I don't want this shit on me. An eagle's neck is Wait. not actually that... No, no, no. Just, I, 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 actually, I actually got something for you, Adam. Because I know how much you love them when we were on break just before. I actually got a neck tattoo. See? See my neck tattoo? I can't, I can't see it what says, it says, though. Hashtag... Yeah, see, see my neck tattoo? It says, hashtag neck tattoo revolution. Fuck's sake. Alright, Terry, what are you naming your Komodo dragon? <sighs> Probably Vass. Vass? Vass from uh, Vass. Far Cry 3. Possibly the most, one oh, of the yeah. most scariest fucking villains I've ever seen in a video game. So, yeah. Okay. So well, there we go. Alright. Now, is there a badge of the badge question for this one? There is, ladies and gentlemen. Ooh. Alright, so we've been talking about, you know, every time we talk about Tom Kavanagh and Job, John Wesley's ship and all that. We refer to My it as... Dan Hedaya. Dan Hedaya. Park Kent. Park Kent. We talk about your last supper. <laughs> That's a party and a half, right? The, the last supper. You know, Paul Heyman's there. You know, you're all talking about criminology Matt's and shit. Matt's not there. It's the best party I've ever had. Matt's just finished wiring up the joint and fucked off. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I want to know what's on our... Who is on our um, last supper? Like DC, Marvel, like... Write in, let us know, and uh, where could you contact us at this point in time? Happy Pam, just before you get yeah. into that, I have a question. No. There were 12 people, as well as Jesus, at the last yes, time. You, 13 yeah, 13 blokes? Yes, mm -hmm. as in 13, so 13 including 13, yourself. 13, yes. 13, thir including myself, no, it's including 13 yourself, people. It's, no, it's your so last I have 12 summer. other guests. You have 12 guests, I have yes. 12, I have 12 slots that I can fill. Essentially, you have six left. Ferrets. You have six left, because we've filled the rest well, for you. You filled the point. I have, I have the right to fill my own last supper, I feel. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. I can invite all the freedom ferrets I want. So, yeah, it's yourself supper. and 12 others. So, it's your last supper. Okay. And if you get this on canvas, you know, you'll probably win a prize. If it's oil on canvas, you send that in to us, and we validate it, we might send you a prize. And now, I'll ask you a question. Brain, where can they contact us to answer the Badger the Badger question this week? You can contact us to answer the Badger the Badger question this week at facebook.com slash from the Batcave, twitter.com slash from Batcave, email us at from the Batcave.com, no, from Batcave.podcast <laughs> at gmail.com, youtube.com slash from the Batcave podcast. Or if you think you're doing Twitter. 140 characters all ass, you can hit us up on Twitter. He did say Twitter. Twitter. I did yeah, say but Twitter. he didn't specify the 140 characters. So, like, for your 12 people. That's true. That, that that's is, going to be tricky. That's tricky on Twitter. There's a Twitter, there's a Twitter challenge for you. Yeah, if you can do that... So, can... hashtag Last Supper Revolution is this week's Twitter. Exactly. <laughs> that's it. Yeah, I have a question about that. Do they have to be actual people or can you use what? fictitious characters as well? Um, if it's you want to be... be DC Marvel. DC Marvel there... or we'll extend it to the WWE Universe because we love playing certain songs, okay. especially one uh, yeah, from I certain can't, So I can't it can't has not to be, have a WWE Universe entry in there. Has to be within the WWE or... WWE all within the confines of this show like you obviously want to invite Chad Kroger no you want to invite the Punisher no yeah, yeah. Optimus That's Prime the... I'll, I'll extend yeah. that to no. Transformers as well what about Marvel Comics <laughs> yeah, absolutely because we talk about Marvel Comics no no but I'm saying Transformers are Marvel Comics are they I thought it was Hasbro only no the comics are released by Marvel ah the more you know ladies so and gentlemen so they are Marvel Comics cool done alright that brings us to the end 
of this week's show, I'm, I'm afraid to say, gentlemen. <sighs> so leave the memories alone. And uh, let's take a moment now to thank all of our fans. Thank you. And to all the haters out there, well, you just can't see. Fuck us. all this. Mm -hmm. Die of tattoo throat cancer. Yeah, I hope you get a neck tattoo when it gets infected. I have been your host, Neck Tattoo Free. Red Thun Adam Gerada. Joining me this week have been also Neck Tattoo Free. The Honey Vegetarian Neil. Get the fuck off my lawn! A bloke who probably should get a neck tattoo, Matt the Probe Richens. Go fuck yourself. And a bloke who gave himself a neck tattoo and therefore will be replaced on next week's show, the Dad Night Brad Nahan. Hashtag Neck Tattoo Revolution. This is my tattoo. <laughs> and we'll see you all next week. And who are you? I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. Yes, I'm Batman. Telegram. I am Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. You sound like Cookie Monster. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm thirsty. I'm hungry. I'm Batman. Darling, I don't have to answer to you. I'm Batman. I'm talking to Batman. Clearly, I'm Batman. I am Batman. This has been a Cabana production.